Okay, let's see here. Got to get some work done here. Wait a minute. What do we have here? The new MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip. Somebody was a little sloppy. I love my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro, but I wonder how this one does with Final Cut Pro in motion. Maybe we can borrow it for a few minutes and check it out. Let's go. So here's the setup we have here. On the right is my 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch with 32 gigs of RAM. And you can see the rest of the stats there on about this Mac. On the left is the brand new MacBook Pro 13 inch with the M1 chip, the Apple Silicon chip with a paltry eight gigs of RAM. And you can see its stats there. It's running on Big Sur. I'm running on Catalina. Now, in both of them, I have the same Final Cut Pro project open. The project itself is on a library, a self-contained library, on each of these Samsung T7 drives. And it's the exact same library copy to each. I'm in a multicam section of this timeline. It's a 1080 timeline, but the multicam includes a 4K clip in ProRes captured to a Ninja 5 from a GH5S, a GoPro Hero 9 clip, and a Canon clip in HD, 1080 HD. And on both machines, it plays fantastic. Nothing's rendered, there's color correction, there's LUTs applied, a bunch of different stuff. And I'll play it here first on my 2019 Micro Pro. Little shack type of a restaurant on the lagoon side. It's exactly what you, what you want to So we actually have four angles going on here because we have a, a, a superimposed picture plus these three angles playing in the angle viewer. And then over on the brand new uh, little <laughs> MacBook Pro 13 inch, it, it exactly plays beautifully. It just plays perfectly. Like it's like butter. So, um, you know, fantastic. So I'm going to start this timer and I'm going to render both these timelines and we'll check it out. This won't be perfectly scientific because I can't press both at the same time. Uh, but I'm going to do shift control R here and shift control R here. And then I'm going to start the timer. So it won't be perfect, but we'll get a sense of it. Okay. A quick check in. You can see it's been about seven minutes. My MacBook Pro is at 71%. The, uh, the M1 MacBook Pro is at 75%. And actually, I had to, this render stopped for some reason it, right at the beginning. I had to start it again. So this one actually uh, didn't get as much time. And it's, it's gotten to the point where it's gotten ahead of my uh, 2019 MacBook Pro. And this little 13 inch is now exceeding it and, and beating it. And we'll see where they end up in a moment here. Okay, so we're a little past the nine minute mark. Uh, the 13 inch MacBook Pro on the left is at 95% and my MacBook Pro 16 inch on the right is at 91%. I should mention this is about a 31 minute timeline in uh, 1080, 24P, so a fairly large project. They're both rendering right about the same amount of time. It looks like they're gonna finish right about the same time. And nope, the 13 inch Macro Pro is going to beat my machine. Unbelievable. Really impressive. And there it's done in under 10 minutes. And mine is still going. It's at 96, 97%. Obviously, not perfectly scientific, but you get the idea. They are rendering about the same amount of speed. Great playback on both, great rendering speed on this uh, M1 13-inch MacBook Pro with eight gigs of RAM. Really incredible. And finally, I'm at 99. It's going to sleep. And finally, That last 1% is taking a long time on my machine. Okay, it's done. And that was almost 11 minutes. So, and this, this, the guy, the new guy on the left with the M1 chip definitely was faster, a little bit faster than my machine with 32 gigs of RAM. And this was the, you know, the newest MacBook Pro 
you could buy in the fall of 2019. So next, I want to do an export test. I'll set it up and be right back. Okay, so I kept the render files uh, so that we'll render from the existing ProRes render files to H.264. You can see in my export settings for each, I've chosen the, the web hosting preset. So we're getting 1920 by 1080 H.264 to force another encoding of the ProRes render files. And I just want you to see that and I'll target, uh, I suppose the desktop for both. And we'll go to desktop here also. And then I'm gonna click save on both machines at the same time and also reset this timer and I'll start the timer right after I click these both. And away we go. Okay, we're coming up on eight minutes here and my 16 inch Macro Pro from 2019 is at about 96% while the M1 chip 13 inch is at 90%. And it's been consistently a little behind the entire time and getting a little bit more behind because you can see it's about 90 versus 97, 98. So it's interesting because it did the render test of ProRes faster, a little bit faster, roughly the same. And now um, the Macro Pro, however, is doing the H.264 encoding faster. In fact, it's just hitting 100% right now. And we'll see when that goes away. Takes a while. By the way, these are 31 minute timelines. There it goes, uh, eight minutes and 30 seconds. And the M1 chip on the MacBook Pro, 13 inch, eight gigs of RAM, is still at about 95, 96% and still going here. So it's taking it a little bit longer, but I have to say I'm really quite impressed. When you look at the cost difference between these two machines, it's really impressive. Of course, a 13 inch screen, I would find difficult um, a little more difficult to work with. There it goes, it stopped at 8.58. So only about 30 seconds longer, and that's a completed encode. Okay, so I wanted to check out motion on this new M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch versus my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro 32 gigs of RAM versus eight gigs of RAM, because motion is where you can really start to bog things down. So in each of them, I've got a 1920 by 1080 10 second project. I've thrown in a 3D object, this animated, robot, I've replicated it a bunch of times, and if I play it on both, you'll see this one's starting out at about 12 frames per second playback. It's a 30 frames per second project. This one's up to 22 already, and this one's still at 19. So uh, again, eight gigs of RAM, and uh, big cost difference, 22 on this one, and we are at 16, 18 on this one. So they're getting better playback on the 13 inch for this project. And then, uh, actually in the same project, but I have a different group here. And what I'm gonna do is make the background transparent. I have this smoke I've set up on both these machines. I've set it up pretty much identically. So I'll just turn this guy on here and shift T for transparent background. It's taking it for a minute because the playhead's all the way at the end. So it has to calculate all those particles. A Little bit unfair. So I'll move back to the beginning on both of them, press the space bar on both. And here we're right away at 29 frames per second. And on my uh, 2019, seven, 16, 17 frames per second, 16, 17 there as we get to the end, I'm down to 13 towards the end and it's at 16 over there. Once it plays again, uh, it's starting out right at 29. I'm at 17, 18, up to 29. So similar performance on a bunch of particles and I kept duplicating them in order to slow things down. But I have to tell you, like if I stop the playback and move the playhead at the end of the project, this is where you can really, you know, sort of test the graphics card more than anything that's going on here. And it's surprisingly good performance. You saw it's putting beach ball a little bit there at the end of 10 seconds to generate thousands and thousands of particles. We're getting the same thing here. And if you try moving any one of these, if I open up this group and select one, and try to drag it on my 2019 MacBook Pro 16 inch, you can see the beach ball and it's, it's tough to drag around. This is where you can really stress test more the graphics card than anything. And if I do it on the 13 inch M1 chip and I select one and drag it with the plate at the very end, so it has to calculate the position of all those particles from the beginning of the project to the end of the project, you know, it's still a little laggy, but it's a little better than my machine. So. 
really impressive, and I can't wait to see the performance on a uh, on a you know on a bigger MacBook Pro with a better graphics card. But this is shocking because it's pretty much almost identical or slightly better performance than my 2019 MacBook Pro with 32 gigs of RAM and the good graphics card versus this really entry level version of this MacBook Pro 13 inch with 8 gigs of RAM and there's nothing upgraded on this. This is really the entry level version. So super interesting. Well, I better give this back. That was very interesting. Very excited about that machine. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below. I'll be excited to see these new machines keep coming out, but boy, I am really impressed. Take it easy, we'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.